And now to the global microchip shortage that's hitting the auto industry harder than originally thought. It's costing automakers $210 billion, nearly double the original estimate. The trickle down effect causing 7.7 .7 million fewer vehicles produced, leading to empty lots and higher prices for customers. The White House is holding a meeting today on the matter to try to come up with some sort of solution. And joining us live now is Sandy Monroe, an automotive consultant with Monroe and Associates. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us. I do want to begin with this. Is there a solution that the U.S. can concoct to deal with this? Not an immediate one, that's for sure. Um, the, tra the, the big tragedy here is that the reason that we have a shortage is because we, uh, most of the automotive companies didn't move to better uh, product design when it came to uh, automotive chips. If we, uh, I can explain it very simply, this is the circuit board that's needed for the front driver's seat inside of the brand new um, Mach-E Mustang. This is a Tesla board and um, that area that you see right here, the little silvered out area, that's the seat mechanism and everything else on the left-hand side of the car is on this board. You can see how much smaller it is for, uh, for the Tesla product. This is all that they needed. If we would have, if the automotive groups would have gone to the newer chips, they wouldn't have had a shortage. But unfortunately, these chips that they were using are old, and it's just like uh, it's like old wine. It costs more money, and they're harder to get. But most of the chips that are are stalling all the production right now are are basically chips that are antiques, 15, 20 years old. Hmm. Well, this is a massive cost, Sandy, to automakers, but yeah. there's also that trickle-down <clears throat> effect, too. What does this mean for auto workers and suppliers that drive so much of our economy here? Everybody's hurting. Everybody. Um, certainly the auto workers, I mean, uh, they come to work to do something. And, um, and it's not their fault that somehow, some way, um, a lot of people made decisions that said, oh, well, let's just go with the old stuff. Let's just stay with the old stuff. And by focusing their attentions on the, uh, uh, what we call the parts bin and not on what the future is gonna look like, it dropped the automakers into uh, this can of worms that we're all suffering, not all of us. I mean, if you talk to the guys that say uh, Tesla or Rivian or Faraday or any of the Chinese companies, they're not really experiencing the same problems but the Japanese companies, the European companies, and the North American companies are experienced because they're using um, chips that, in essence, uh, what used to take something about the size of your cell phone and turned it into something the size of the, the ball inside of your ballpoint mm -hmm. pen. That's kind of the difference that we're looking at. All right. Sandy Monroe, our thanks for your time and expertise. No problem. Thank you.